St. Rose of Lima. I am Padre Estabal, a missionary of the Order of St. Dominic. I was born in Spain, but I have spent the greater part of my life in the new colony of Peru on the west coast of South America. Seventy-five years have passed since the first Spanish conquerors set foot in the Western Hemisphere. A second generation of Spanish Peruvians is flourishing in this new world. One of the oldest families is the Delgados, of whom my favorite is young Rose Delgado. My father wants me to marry, Pedro. Yes, I expected he would, Rose. And tell me, who is the fortunate young gentleman? I've never met him. My father arranged it years ago. Well, that's the custom, Rose. Is the young man here in Lima? No, but he's coming soon. You know his father, Don Calvillo. Oh, yes. Well, now, you'll never want for anything. Young Pedro, isn't it? Padre, what if I don't want to marry? Rose, I know what you're thinking. Have you spoken to your father? No, but he suspects. And he doesn't approve, huh? Well, I don't think he'd stand in my way if he really thought I wanted a religious life. Aren't you sure? Yes, but sometimes... I know sometimes these things can't be rushed. But there isn't much time. Pedro's ship sailed weeks ago. Is he on the Santa Marcos? Yes. Well, then, my dear, time has run out. Oh, no. The Santa Marcos arrived over an hour ago, Rose. Padre, what am I to do? You wait until you're sure. If you have a true vocation, you'll know. Oh, maybe he won't want to marry me. Either you don't know your own beauty or you, uh, you don't know young men. don't know what's keeping her. It's not at all like Rose, Don Pedro. Oh, she probably doesn't know I've arrived. I'll uh, come back some other time. Uh, aren't you anxious to see her? Oh, of course, senor, but while I revere my father and the old customs... You I... aren't sure you want to marry a girl you've never seen? Uh, senor, perhaps your daughter feels the same way. No, Pedro. I'm sure she has uh, admirable qualities... Hasn't your father ever written to you about what Rose is like? He made your daughter appear the most desirable and most beautiful woman in Peru. But you weren't fooled. Oh, senor, I didn't mean Of course. That. It's only a man in his declining years may perhaps confuse youth with beauty. Mm. Well, then I won't try to persuade you that Rose is beautiful. Ah, I... Uh, Appreciate your frankness. After all, I too am in my declining years. Oh, senor. And Rose has been amply endowed by nature. Well, women of generous proportions are said to be jovial, and proper clothing can do much to repair the damages of nature. I knew a woman in Seville with a face as ugly as a turtle, but she knew a trick of wearing an even uglier hat, so that by contrast her face seemed fair. I'm sure your daughter has an inner beauty. You're kind. My father writes that she is uh, deeply religious. Oh, she is indeed. Uh, senor, I just remembered an important errand. I'll drop by another time. Uh, soon, very soon. <laughs> Too late. Too late, you're trapped on Pedro. Come in, Rose. Father. Is that Rose? Come, Rose. Don Pedro has been waiting. Senor. Don Pedro Caudillo, may I present your fiancé, my daughter Rose? I'm pleased to meet you, Senor Caudillo. Well, Pedro, nothing to say to your future bride? Are you ill, Senor? I, uh, I am, Senorita. A sickness of the heart that overtook me the moment you entered the room. Oh, then perhaps you'd better go. Uh, better to stay, but I must go. You know my father is ill. I see him every day. He asked me to begin immediately at the mines. Oh, you're going there now? My apologies, senorita. I'll go with you. 
Well, the mines are no place for a lady. Oh, nonsense. Excuse me while I get my wrap. Uh, wait, uh, senorita, my carriage holds only two. Oh, aren't you alone? Well, there's no room for the chaperone. Oh, bother the chaperone. What? Aren't you to be trusted? Uh, of course. Well, then what harm in it? I'll be back in a moment. The next turn to your right. Senorita? Yes? Would you do me the honor to call me Pedro? Of course, Pedro. Rose, I want you to understand something. In Madrid, there's a girl. I thought I loved her. I, I wanted to marry her. On the voyage over, I was desperate. And now? Nothing else matters. And you're a young lady in Madrid? Now I can't even remember what she looks like. You can tell me about her. Well, she's a lovely girl. All, all my friends thought her beautiful. She's charming and witty. Good family. We, we like to be with each other. And you still intend going through with our betrothal? Oh, it was never like this, Rose. I didn't tremble when I was near her. You don't know anything about me. I know enough. But what about you? Do you find me displeasing? You're attractive, of course. And most eligible. But... What is it, Rose? An explanation wouldn't satisfy you. And if you wait... One may not be necessary. Oh, stop the carriage here. Uh, here. Let me help you down. Oh, thank you. Look around you, Pedro. These are your lands, as far as you can see. And here are your mines, the richest in this area. Who are uh, all those men? Your native workers. But I didn't know my father used so many of the Indians. Used isn't the right word, Pedro. They are abused. Oh, no. My father wouldn't hurt a fly. Why, these men are his slaves. Well, does it matter, these animals? Well, they are men, the same as you. Well, they're only the form of men. Have you met any of them? Well, hardly, since I arrived only this morning. Then come over here. Where are we uh, going? I want you to meet a friend of mine. Friend, here? You see. Segoya! Ah, here he comes. An old man. Do you speak his language, Rose? He speaks ours. Mm. How are you, my dear friend? Senorita Rose, you are kind to call. May I present Don Pedro Cavillo? Cavillo? Don Pedro, my friend Segoya. Friend of the Senorita Rose is welcome. Segoya Don Pedro has just arrived from Spain. He knows nothing about Peru or the Incas. Nothing. Except that his father owns these mines. And his grandfather before him. I knew the first, Don Caudillo. I imagine you did. You killed him. Pedro. Well, one of these savages did. That is correct. He was slain by my people. Come on, Rose. But we are not savages. Uh, listen, I don't like your manner. Hereafter, keep your place. I am granted certain privileges. Why? Because I am a prince. Prince of what? I would have been king had not your people come. King not only of Peru, but of all the lands to the east and to the south. Your people came and took all this from my people. You should be grateful they brought you the benefits of civilization. The conquerors brought nothing but greed and cruelty. They destroyed the civilization. My people are the Incas. Our history goes back farther than yours in Spain. While you still fought bloody wars with your neighbors, we had learned to live in peace. And you call us uncivilized. Civilized men don't murder in cold blood. Your grandfather was one of the conquerors. They defiled our temples, stole our gold, mistreated our women. We had done no more than slay a cruel and greedy plunderer who had stolen our birthright. Well, that's the way life is. Men lose the rights they're not prepared to defend. 
There was one blessing your people brought, your missionaries. They brought kindness and compassion and truth. Many of my people have adopted Christianity, the same beliefs which your conquerors acknowledged in public, but reviled in practice. That was a long time ago. The day of the conqueror is over. No, no. You still plunder and rob, though no longer openly. Look at my people. Still enslaved. Working your minds without reward. Stripped of the dignity of manhood. All that he says is true, Pedro. Well, it's it's unfortunate. I'm, I'm not without sympathy. Sympathy isn't enough. What seems strangest to my people is that in your missionaries you possess the teachers of truth. But you won't listen. In Christianity you found the secret of living. But greed blinds you. How ironic that my people pray as Christians that those of you who follow the conquerors might come to accept and practice your own religion. Come, Rose. It's getting dark. Yes, we have to go, Segoya. God bless you, my dear. Good day, Senor Caudillo. Good day. a word since we left, Pedro. Hmm? Oh, I was thinking. Of Segoya? Of you. Do you still think the Incas are savages? I'm sorry for them, Rose, but what can I do? Someday you will own the mine. But you, you can't turn back the course of history, Rose. Half the empires of the world were carved in blood and human misery. You, you can't ask me to try to stop history. I, I'm only one man. But you can accomplish a great deal. Well, I, I wouldn't think of giving back what my family worked and died for. But there are fair ways of dealing with these people. We've made slaves of them. And that violates everything that we believe in. You really feel you must do something for them? Sometimes, Don Pedro, I feel I must devote my life to them. I'm not sure I understand. I've thought of entering a religious order. Oh, no, Rose. I could dedicate my life to praying and working for these people. You don't want that, Rose. How can you know what I want? Well, I, I know it isn't what I want. Do we ever stop to think what it is that God wants? Yes, Papa? At church again? Yes. Pedro was here. He waited over an hour. I'm sorry. He didn't say he was coming. Well, when he tells you, you've always an excuse. Well, I've been busy. At the church. Or at my needlework. Well, can't you talk with him as you work? I think as I work or pray. There are problems. There wouldn't be if you'd make up your mind. I have made up my mind. Rose, listen to me. You're betrothed. These promises are not easily broken. Only by your taking vows would I permit you to break your betrothal. But we must be certain. I am. Doesn't it matter that Pedro will be hurt? Yes, if he really will be. Can't you see that he loves you? Oh, does he? Oh, how can you doubt it? The way he looks at you. Pedro is no ordinary young man. Because he's wealthy? Don't condemn wealth. We're close enough to poverty so you should know how important wealth is. There are others worse off. We are at least still free. But, Rose, you can't right all wrongs. No one expects you to. I expect it. But think of your mother and your brothers and sisters. Think what a union with the Caldillo family would mean. I have thought of it, Papa. Rose? 
Uh, are you out here? Here, Pedro. Ah, your father said I'd find you back here. How strange it is. This is my grotto. My brothers built it for me. Grotto? In the back garden? Yes. Rose, you're drifting away from me. Would it make so much difference, Pedro? Well, how can you ask? I, I I need you. Others need me much more. Wait, Rose. Listen. You want to help these people. Oh, it's more than that. But that is important. Yes, it's very important. Rose, what if you could help them more by not entering a religious order? What do you mean? If you marry me, there'll be no more slaves at the mines. Those who choose shall go free. If they remain, they become paid workers. You'd really do that? Anything, Rose. And if I don't marry you? I can find no charity in my heart. Leave me alone, Pedro, please. Leave me alone. shall I do, Padre? You are the only one who can answer that, Rose. I know. But Padre, have I the right to cheat these people of their chance for freedom? And have you the right to turn away when God calls? No. If yours is a true vocation, your duty is clear. Even if it means that I can do so little for them instead of so much? Rose, while there is any doubt in your mind, you must make no rash decisions. It would be tragic if you rejected Don Pedro's love only to find that you weren't meant for the religious life. It would be equally tragic if you married him only to find that you were. Padre, I want to do what's right. I know it's difficult, Rose. But you'll know soon. Watch and pray. to tell you, Segoia. You are very thoughtful, Rose. You even put a temptation in my path, for I can't smother a hope that you will marry Don Pedro. Oh, but, Segoia, wouldn't it be wrong to cheat your people? Let me say this, Rose. Make up your mind according to your heart and your conscience. Don't allow the fate of my people to sway you. You can tell me that? My motives aren't altogether pure, Rose. You see, I distrust promises made in a bargain. You distrust Pedro? I'm an old man, Rose, and I know human nature. If his promise was made out of deep personal feeling or conscience, then I would trust him. I'm afraid Don Pedro doesn't feel it deeply. If you made this sacrifice, Rose, and he fails to keep his promise, think what you would have lost. How can I know if he will change? Well, you can't. If it's only an infatuation, your power over him will vanish with your fading beauty. I'm afraid you're right, Sequoia. <sighs> what a pity, Rose, you could not turn into a turtle for a day to see how much it would mean to him. Yes, that would solve many problems. <laughs> Pedro, I didn't think you'd come again. I've been very uh, busy at the mines, and then we have visitors from Spain. They arrived without warning last week. Yes, uh, Rose and I saw you with them, passing in your carriage. The young girl with you, she's very beautiful. Uh, yes, but Rose is the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. When did you see her last, Pedro? Why, a, a week ago. Hasn't 
something come between you and Rose? No, senor. If I had my way, we'd have been married the day after I arrived. I thought... Yes, senor? I don't know why. I, I thought you'd broken your engagement. Did Rose tell you that? She's told me nothing. It's just... Where is she? In the garden. Pardon me, I I was looking... Rose? Yes, Pedro? Why, what's happened to you? Am I changed? Your, your hair, your hands, your clothing, I, I, I didn't know Because you. I cut my hair? Your wonderful flowing hair. Rose. In my hands, I've been working in the fields. Fields. And the sun has burnt my face. And these are my work clothes. But why, Rose? Why? I saw you last week, Pedro, passing in the carriage. And then later I saw your guest at church. I sat behind her. She's lovely. Is she the girl you knew in Madrid? Uh, yes. Uh, you like her? Uh, well, of, of course. So much you wanted to marry her. Until I met you. You still feel the same? Why, of course. <laughs> you are gallant, Pedro. No, it, it isn't that. You love me. Of course No, I... no, no. Don't look away. Look at me and tell me. I loved you as you were. Would you love me again if I become as I was? I don't understand you, Rose. Do you love me, or do you love the blackness of my hair and the white of my skin? I... F Will your young lady go back to Spain? Well, she can't very well stay here. I remember you once told me that you'd hardly noticed if she was beautiful. What drew you together was something deeper than beauty. I'm leaving, Rose. Goodbye. I... I don't understand this. You will. I pray you will someday. Rose, if you... Goodbye, Pedro. Goya, what a surprise. Good afternoon, Rose. Oh, come sit down in the shade. Oh, my, you're looking so well. And you, I don't have to ask. It shows in your eyes. Tell me all the news, Sigoya. Everything. Oh, you've heard nothing? No, only that my family is well. Nothing else for six months. Yes, your family is very well. Your brother works with Don Pedro at the mines. Oh, no. Rose, things have changed. Don Pedro kept his promise. Oh, thank God. How I prayed. Even though he married another. Yes. Are they happy? You cannot imagine, Rose. When Don Pedro heard I was to come here, he sought me out. His wife with him. He said to tell you that at last he is beginning to understand. And that he and the senora thank you. He said you would understand. Do you, Rose? Yes. Yes, I do understand. After a life of devout service, Rose died in Peru in the year 1617 and was laid to rest near the convent which bears her name, Santa Rosa. Today, St. Rose of Lima is patroness of South America. <laughs>